As public institutions, it is our responsibility to make sure that the scholarship that's produced by our faculty and staff is accessible and that it can have the most impact. I want to begin uh, by talking about diversity in our collections and in scholarly publishing. We're obliged to just ensure that no single vendor or small group of vendors becomes entitled to so much of our budgets that we can't effectively serve our campus's diverse and emerging needs. Costs associated with access to our own collective scholarly work should be, and I will use a very mild word here, these costs should simply be reasonable. And one consequence of having allowed a monopolistic system to develop around commercially licensed journal bundles is that the dollar values that our vendors are assigning to these bundles have truly lost touch with reality. To pay as much as we are to have something ready, online, available to get at at any time, when it's barely, if never used, is just an extremely expensive way to go about doing it. Of course, we look at article downloads. We do look at other factors, such as uh, citation rates for articles in a given journal, and we put a lot of weight on that. That's telling us that there are scholars out there that are using those works in their own work. The data is absolutely telling us 100% that we have hundreds of journals that are not read or barely read. I should mention too that there's a lot of qualitative uh, input on this. Of course, we do talk with faculty who are, who are interested and willing to work with us on understanding uh, journal publishing, journal the, the literature in their fields, and uh, which, which titles they really are covet and are important to them. Subscriptions are now, as Tyler uh, touched upon, uh, only one of several uh, lawful uh, means to access uh, scholarly uh, materials. In many cases, there would be perpetual access to uh, material that we licensed, purchased in the past. Resource sharing through interlibrary loan was designed as a way uh, for libraries to share uh, those li libraries with subscriptions to uh, journals that are essential to programs that they're offering can share with other libraries that may not have programs that would require or demand uh, lead to them uh, subscribing to those journals. Repositories are uh, locations where uh, either uh, working papers, preprint pre -print versions, or if the publisher allows, final versions um, of uh, scholarly content can be hosted and made accessible um, at no charge uh, to uh, uh, usually without restriction. On-demand purchasing directly from publishers or through third-party vendors that work with publishers uh, and to purchase uh, scholarship uh, journal articles, for example, at the article level. This is a highly complex ecosystem in which we are all intertwingled. Without reform to the entire system, research is going to continue to flow behind paywalls or into OA journals that have sky-high article processing fees. The most important consideration and reform I might suggest is to uh, look at removing journal-based metrics from research evaluation. We know that some scholarly societies rely on subscription revenue from big deal partners. Uh, unfortunately, we also know that in the past, big deals have forced us to cancel subscriptions to some independent society journals, ironically driving some of those societies into the arms of big deal publishers. So, as libraries rethink our commitments to big deals, we can begin to reverse this process, dedicating more resources to sustaining independent publications that are scholar-led and that support the research community rather than supporting a commercial entity. The impacts of uh, the pandemic uh, on, on our finances and, and, and all the effects of that uh, just accelerate the inevitable collapse of the status quo. Uh, for all the reasons talked about by my colleagues already, 
we need to make drastic changes to our library collection strategies. And such changes will not be temporary uh, or reversible. Uh, given the current crisis and in uh, retrospect, it's something uh, we have needed to do for some time. There is a real danger to academic freedom here. Scholarship is, scholarship is shaped by the metrics we use to evaluate scholars. And by controlling metrics, vendors are given an outsized influence on the trajectory of research itself. And one of the most important things about these agreements, from my perspective, is that they lack transparency. So our clinical key agreement is written in such a way where there's a nebulous increase should we walk away from our science direct contract. So we don't know what the consequences are for us to walk away. And this is representative of other things that happen with other contracts. I think we have to get back to our values, um, equitable access, diverse collections, and fair costs. For example, a future with equitable access would erase the global divide and um, an access to research for both readers and authors. It would demonstrate our commitment to solving big problems um, beyond the higher education community. It would let faculty authors retain their rights and share and reuse their work. It, it would enable text and data mining across all published research. And it would end high author fees that create new barriers to research publication, this time for authors instead of the readers. And a future with diverse collections would better meet the unique needs of our research communities because one size doesn't fit all. It would foster scholar-led initiatives at our institution that brings control back to our scholarly community. And most importantly, it would support independent and underrepresented voices and outlets and approaches. We really took it far and wide. We went out with four values. We talked about affordability, sustainability, transparency and open and public access and we op everyone understands open access but we needed to add in the public because carolina is a very public institution and we believe in that public mission and so we believe that that would resonate well with our campus and and it act and it truly did um, at the same time that we were talking to campus about sustainable scholarship which was partly around Elsevier, but it was a, a much broader message that we were trying. Uh, we were trying to contextualize the landscape and trying to say that we could not continue in the same way that we always had with these big deals. We have 395 titles down from the maybe couple thousand that we had to begin with. And our spend uh, for, this, for this year was at 1.6 million. So we brought it down by a million. Um, it was, I will say, a tremendous amount of work. We had many, many people in the library involved, again, from the university library and down to our liaisons across our tech services. This is, this is an enormous effort that has to go in, but it was well worth it. Um, we, have, uh, we talked to so many people on campus that messaged us afterwards and said, Thank you for breaking that deal with Elsevier. We are so happy. Can we do that with other publishers? Um, we have real champions now on campus. I'm just so impressed with uh, all the comments by all the speakers. You have no idea. I mean, I've been jotting things down and my head's been shaking up and down in affirmation, um, all of the values and statements and perspective you've been saying are just uh, really have aligned with uh, what we've been doing. We are not set on debundling, unbundling, excuse me. We are not set on withdrawal or walking away from negotiations. We are not set on a transformative agreement, but what we are set on is change. We think it's high time for change, substantive change. Um, I remember in one of our early meetings with our Elsevier uh, representatives, 
they referred to their contract, one of the representatives referred to their contract as Byzantine. Uh, I think this was a, a frank moment. <laughs> uh, and I agree with them 100%. We have contracts that are based on decades old commitments of print subscriptions. I, it, it's, it's absurd. Uh, and so that needs to change. And then secondly, the other commitment we have is to price reduction. Um, an additive approach is no longer appropriate and we need to get to price reductions for many of the reasons you've talked about. So I'll wrap up there.